Now I start the presentation. Good afternoon. My name is Masaki Iwamoto, assistant professor at Faculty of Design Kyushu University. So I will make the presentation of Shoeyo Archive and the introduction to the works of Shoeyo. I encountered Shoeyo thanks to doc Dr. Nicole Gardner, the co-organizer of the visiting Shoeyo exhibition. Uh, when I met Nico in 2018, she asked me if I know Shoeyo, and I said yes, but uh, asked her why she is interested in Shoeyo. Nico answered that Shoeyo was considered as one of the pioneers in digital design, and that's why. So I was surprised, since I didn't know that fact at all. So in November 2018, we invited Shoeyo to Kyushu University for his lecture. And after the lecture, Yo told me that he will move his office soon and he had no idea how to deal with his drawings, models and documents. So I asked him not to dispose the precious document. And after the discussion with him, Yo decided to entrust all the, his archives to Kyushu University. So thanks to Dr. Nico, I'm interested in Yo and met him and thanks to that, your precious documents are saved, and now we are doing this exhibition in Australia. So, from the beginning, Kyushu University and UNSW Sydney collaborate closely on Shoyo Archive, not only organizing the archive, but we are also working together for the digital documentation of the project using 3D scanning and photogrammetry. You see some of our e output in the exhibition at Austria Design Center and our website and later in this symposium. So now, let me introduce the architect. Shoe Yo was born in Kumamoto, Kyushu in 1940. He studied economics, not architecture. Then he went to US and studied design at Wittenberg University, Ohio. He came back to Japan in 1964 and established your design office in 1970. Yo had a lot of successful projects since then. As Hank told in the beginning, Yo is internationally recognized as one of the pioneers of computational design. In 2013, Greg Lynn created an exhibition called Archaeology of the Digital at Canadian Center of Architecture. In this exhibition, Greg Lin picked up Yo as a pioneer of the digital design, along with Peter Eisenman, Chuck Hoberman, and Frank Gehry. But at that time, this was not well known in Japan. In Japan, on the other hand, Yo was famous for his pioneering large-scale timber buildings. Mikio Koshihara, an authority of timber structure in Japan, the professor of the University of Tokyo, positioned Yo. Ogni project as a key work in the renaissance of wooden buildings in 20th century in Japan. As you may know, now wooden building is very important in Japan. A lot of architects, such as Kengo Kuma, Toyo Ito, Washigel Ban, are working to design modern timber buildings. But Shoeyo was a pioneer of this trend. So Shoei was regarded as a pioneer of both digital design and modern timber structure. So why and how he achieved this? To understand this, I am now conducting a historical research on the life and works of Shoeyo based on the documents in the archive. Educational background was very important. Yo studied economics at Keio University, not architecture. And Yo's supervisor at Keio University was Dr. Iwao Ozaki. Later on, Ozaki became an authority of econometrics in Japan. Under the guidance of Ozaki, Yo learned the potential of the computer. As Greg Lin pointed out, this background may be the one reason why he became a pioneer in digital design in the future. But Yo turned from economics to design. When he was a student in Tokyo, he had a chance to visit the Air France office designed by French designer Charlotte Perrin and Yo was struck by interior design and realized suddenly that he wanted to study design. So Yo went to the United States to study fine and applied art at Wittenberg University, Springfield, Ohio. His supervisor, 
Professor Don Danifon was an expert in architectural restoration and interior design. During the period he stayed in the United States, Yo traveled to Rome and visited Pantheon. He was inspired by the movement of the light in Pantheon as an architectural expression of the natural phenomena. This experience influenced his entire works as a designer. And during his early career, Yo was influenced by German engineer Fry Otto. Yo learned the structural optimization and form finding method through the works of Fry Otto. I think this helps Yo to understand the potential of computer analysis later in the 1980s. So Yo start, returned to Japan in 1964 and started to work as an interior designer and in, at International Design Associate in Tokyo where he was involved in the interior design of Leader's Digest office in Tokyo and also in Sydney. Yo, Shoe Yo told me that he visited Sydney in the end of 1960s for the project of the Leader Digest Sydney. And then Yo moved to Fukuoka, uh, one of the central cities in Kyushu Island, and founded his own studio called Yo Design Office in 1970. He started his career as interior and product designer. The light motif of his early works are light as natural phenomenon. He designed serial projects called Luminous Furniture. In this project, the effect of light, it is as if the gravity doesn't exist. From light, you became interested in the gravity. And in the end of the 1970s, Yo started to design more architecture projects. And in architecture projects, he pursued of light and gravity as well. For example, House of Light Lattice was built in 1981. The light coming through the slit changes from time to time. This is the architecture to capture the light as a natural phenomenon. And she, since Shoei Yo was interested in light and gravity, he was also very interested in transparency. He designed WXYZ chair in 1976. These chairs are the interpretation of famous modern chairs designed by Mackintosh, Liedfeld, Miss van der Rohe, and Le Corbusier, but all in glass. His pursuit of non-gravity and transparency led him to apply the advanced technologies. Coffee shop Ingot, built in Fukuoka in 1977, is its example. In this project, Yo applies the first four-sided structure glazing in Japan. And Kinoshita Clinic also applied advanced technology to create the building against the gravity. The building is finished in fiber reinforced polymer panels, a materials not widely used at that time. Uh, beautiful models and drawings of Kinoshita Clinics are now exhibited in Australian, Australian Design Center. <coughs> and for this project, you also applied silicone sealing hinge, which is used for vehicle industry. Thanks to his background as interior and product designer, he was never afraid of applying new technologies to his project. I think this is also a reason why he applied computational design years earlier than other Japanese architects did. And in 1984, Ogni project started. This is the first project in which Yo employed timber and computer for his design. Yo got a phone call from the mayor of Ogni town, Kumamoto, and Yo was asked to make the master plan to utilize the post-industrial site previously occupied by rail railway infrastructure. And Oguni Mayor also asked him to utilize the thinned wood of local cedar trees to promote the forest industry. To understand the importance and value of Oguni project, I need to tell you a little bit about the history. <coughs> After the World War II, the construction of large-scale timber building was limited in Japan. Japanese had a trauma that their homes were destroyed by American bombs. In addition, timber buildings were frequently damaged by natural disaster. 
After the disaster of Isewan Typhoon in 1959, the Architectural Institute of Japan declared the decision to prohibit wooden architecture. The Building Standards Act in Japan didn't allow the design of a timber building with more than 3,000 square meters until 2000. So, it was a big challenge to realize a large-scale timber building in the 1980s. Inspired by Fry Otto's project in Germany, you realized the potential of combining small pieces of wood to create a large space. But problem was the joinery, how to join the small pieces. You got a solution. Professor Matsuige at Matsuigengo at Waseda University proposed you to use ball joint system with epoxy resin. Thanks to this solution, you became confident to design large span timber architecture. So at first, you realized the music atelier in 1986 in the forest of Minamiyaso, not in Oguni. This is a very fast timber space frame in Japan. Before starting Oguni project, you needed to convince the Ministry of Construction that his timber architecture is safe. Music atelier was built to convince this, the officers. This is architecture as a test piece, so to say. This is the interior of the music atelier, showing the uh, fast space, timber space frame. And after the success of the music atelier, Ministry of Construction approved the construction of large-scale timber buildings in Oguni town. The first realization was Oguni bus terminal, shown in this slide. For the complicated structure, you applied computer-based structure analysis for the first time, in collaboration of Taiyo Kogyo Company, who had a computer program to calculate the performance of steel truss structure. And finally, in 1988, the Oguni Dome was realized. This is the first timber building with more than 3,000 square meters in Japan. The structural documents of Oguni Dome showed the transition from the analog calculation to the digital, from manual calculation to digital calculation. And through the serial timber project, you sophisticated the joint detail alongside with the experiments done by Professor Gengo Matsui in Waseda University. This evolution of the details contributed to the renaissance of timber structure in Japan in the end of 20th century. In the Oguni project, you decided the form and then engineer analyzed the structure. Form was not decided by a computer. But in this project, Galaxy Toyama project, you started to do the parametric design. The four, side, four sides of the building exterior are flat. This was your decision. And according to the position of the columns as parameter, the roof structure deforms three-dimensionally. In the design process of Galaxy Toyama, you witnessed the correspondence of the computational analysis, the photoelasticity analysis, and the more fringe appeared on the architectural model. From this correspondence, your thought computational analysis is trustful. This is a moment that the architect became confident about the digital design. So in the middle of the 1990s, you continued to design buildings using computer. Naiju Community Center represents your most radical architectural exploration. The shape of the roof was decided through the form finding with origami and advanced computer analysis realized the complex geometry. And for the construction of this three-dimensional concrete shell structure, you decided to use bamboo net as a formwork. The bamboo formwork was hand-weaven with the help of the local community. The building is located in the mountain side of Fukuoka. Unfortunately, the building is vacant and abandoned at the moment. Through the activities of Shoyo Archive, I hope to restore and conserve this unique and fascinating architecture. This is a final slide of my presentation. 
In our revisiting Shoyo exhibition, we are focusing six projects. Hinoshita Clinic, Music Atelier, Ognibus Terminal, Ognidome, Naiji Community Center, and Galaxy Toyama. The models, drawing, photograph, and as well as 3D environment are uh, in of the spatial archive. You can see these things at Australian Design Center and our website. I hope you will enjoy the real and, and virtual exhibition. Thank you very much for your listening.